Yo, 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 yo. Oh, um, it's been a while since you guys have seen me. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'll just go over like everything you guys missed. So it's Thursday of this week now. Hopefully I get this video out by like either Friday or Saturday. Um, but I've been sick, like literally since the <clears throat> see like literally since the start of this week um so that caused me to not really be filming i was like literally just posted up on the couch over there with boogie um watching a movie i watched the big short um and yeah i was literally just like oh my god boogie just put his nose on my balls bro anyways i was just chilling sick not doing anything but um i I traded on Monday. We finally took our first loss. Um, if you guys follow me on TikTok, you already know that. So we took our first loss on Monday and then we won on Tuesday and then we didn't trade yesterday and then we won again today. So like, hey man, like one loss on the S&P 500, one loss for me on this entire month. Uh, we did take another Forex trade. I didn't personally take it, but I did send it out as a signal. So, you know, just being honest with you guys and we did lose that one as well. But that just goes to show, like, I just want to stick with the S&P 500 right, right now because I've just been murdering it. Um, literally, like, I need to go back and look at the the trades. But I think for me, in terms of S&P 500 trades, I was like 23 and 1 on the entire month, um, which is ridiculous. Um, or I guess 22 and 1 because today is the first of the new month S or the second. Um, so... With that being said, I want to continue um, just doing really well with um, in terms of trading and continue upping social media. Um, and also with that being said, I'm getting a little bit better off of my sickness. I'm still sick, but um, I do want to make a lot, a lot, a lot of YouTube videos for you guys um, because um, I, I just want to keep increasing social media content, keep increasing and pushing out volume of videos. So with that being said, you'll probably see an educational video before this, um, just going over like weekly recap of the S&P 500. Actually, I know you will see that because I'm about to go post it or I'm about to go film it and then post it. Um, yeah, but then after that, it's literally just going to be video, video, video. I want to keep just like pushing out videos to you guys um, because I really do appreciate all of the love and um, support that you guys have been giving me lately. Um, and I wanna keep this, I wanna keep this vibe going, baby. We hit 5K on YouTube, which is huge. I know it might not seem like a lot, but that's huge for me, bro. Um, we're about to hit 50K on TikTok, which is, like I said, huge. I told you guys, 100K is coming this year, if not sooner rather than later, um, because we're pretty much already at, at 50K. So let's keep this up. Um, I do wanna take you guys on a little drive throughout the, Utah Canyon. And if you didn't see uh, the TikToks that I've been putting out, um, I'm going to start doing something uncomfortable um, every single day um, to put myself out of my comfort zone to kind of, you know, reduce complacency. Because something that I noticed, um, especially this month, like all of December, I was like, grind, 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 grind. Um, and this month, I was seeing rewards and profits from me grinding, like focusing, really locking in on trading locking in on social media and I was seeing a lot of rewards and reaping a lot of rewards and that caused me to not do nearly as much as I did during December. Um, so I kind of want to make it so I'm constantly improving on myself um, and in turn, you know, like constantly getting all those rewards um, while also improving myself and you guys should do the same. Okay, so today I took like a freezing cold shower um, and uh, I can toss the TikTok in here um, or not, it doesn't really matter, but um, I wanna do something that's out of my comfort zone every single day. So you'll probably see one or two or maybe even three of those um, in this video. And I highly suggest you guys do it too, because something that I noticed um, where I was able to actually like find myself and actually sit, like pick myself up and be like, all right, bro, you, got, you either gotta make this shit work or you're going to go do something that you hate, which is a nine to five. Um, and that point in my life, uh, was the time when I was most motivated and just like literally willing to survive. And that's when I had negative $2,000 in my bank account. Um, and that's a very uncomfortable position to be in. And from there, I really didn't look back. Um, from there, I just went balls to the wall with literally everything for like two, three, four years straight now. I would still saying I'm, I'm, I'm going pretty hard, um, but not as hard as I, I want to and not as hard as I was when I was literally just like working to survive. Um, so uh, pretty much like that whole speech was just like about like saying like, bro, 
when you are put in uncomfortable and like literally like fight or or survive or die situations, you you go all out. So that's kind of um, what I'm looking to do with this. It's just kind of like, you know, put myself in an uncomfortable situation every single day to make it so um, I can keep improving on myself and keep, you know, like you essentially what it is is like, you know, look down into that hole, put drop yourself into that hole during that one little uncomfortable situation. And then boom, you're just moving up a step higher. Um, that's kind of how I see it. And you know, this is like kind of corny, but like David Goggins, he's always the one to say like, you got to put yourself, you know, in the worst position, in the worst mindset in order for you to grow, right? The only way that you grow is when you're in like the worst position ever, right? Cause the only way you can go is up. So there's a little motivational TJR for you guys. Um, Another thing that I want to focus on for pretty much all of 2023, um, uh, you guys have probably seen in my TikToks, is just spreading positivity, man. Um, like, just being in, like, the position that I'm in, um, especially in terms of social media, like, you see so much hate being thrown around by, like, people that don't even know you. Like, people who don't even know me or know the things that I've been through or know the things that I've done in my life, like, just, like, you know, trying to bring me down for no reason. And I'm not affected by it anymore. I know I was affected by it like a month ago, but like right now it's like, I see stuff like that. And it's like, I honestly feel bad for those people that are commenting those kinds of things. And it's like, dude, like you could be doing so many other things with your life besides bringing people down. And like, that's what you choose. That's what you're choosing to do. It's just crazy to me. Um, but anyways, like the, uh, the whole point of this is just like, Hey man, 2023, be a better person. Um, I know like I, I have, I have so much to improve on. I'm only 20 years old, bitch. I'm not no 21. I could fuck a stripper hoe, but I can't go in the club. You know what I'm saying? Shout out loan. But like, he's right, bro. Like, I don't want to go in the club. I want to work on myself. I want to work on my business. I want to teach you guys. I want to, I want, I literally just want to help. Um, so literally that's my goal. 2023, I want to go on a bunch of service trips. Like, TJR, bro, like, I, I don't need this chain. I don't need this ring. I don't need the f jewelry, bro. Like, I'm trying to help people, um, inspire people, and actually, like, change some lives. Like, I know I've already done that, and I've seen your guys' DMs saying thank you for, like, turning me profitable, and I've been able to change my life for the better, but, bro, like, I'm trying to do this. Like, I, I have the ability to do, um, to do a lot more than I'm already doing right now. Like, I'm spending money on useless stuff, and I kind of want to spend it on stuff that will actually impact people um, forever, you know, change their life. Like I want people to see me um, like giving back to them and like actually be appreciative of it because that's just like going back to like the hateful comments type of thing. Like seeing those, it's like, that doesn't really drag me down, but seeing like when people are like genuinely like grateful and thankful for like what I've done for them, that makes me extremely happy. So 2023, get after it, spread positivity. Don't be hating on people for no stupid reason, bro. Like they're just trying to live life. So are you. Okay. So live life to its fullest. All right. So with that being said, we're going to go be uncomfortable today. Well, we already were, I already took a cold shower. As you can tell, hair's a little bit wet, but that was a long ass intro. Um, but hopefully that inspired you guys to actually get up, get your shit done. Um, put yourself in an uncomfortable position to get to where you want to be in in life, bro. Like you really only have one life in this. Um, and that's something that really like changed my mindset with a lot of this. It's like, bro, like, like this is it. So do something with it. Like you're, you're sitting around playing a game. Like, don't you want to do something? Don't you want people to like remember you or be thankful for you or like for you to be like old sitting down on your deathbed, bro. And like, you know, life flashes before your eyes and you're looking back on all these great memories that you made instead of like stupid stuff. You know, like obviously you want to live life and enjoy it and enjoy the like fruits of your labor. Um, but I, I honestly think there's a lot more to life than just like spending money. Um, but yeah, that being said, long ass intro. Let's get into the video. I'm going to take you guys on a little drive through the Utah canyons. Hi. All right. We're goody, we're goody, we're goody, we're goody, we're goody with the hoodie. Um, got my energy bev. Um, as you can see, I'm feeling a little bit better. Not necessarily the best, but slightly better. So just hit up 7-Eleven, um, got a little energy bev. Um, I'm putting you guys on, if you don't know, 3D energy, um, super gas. 
Uh, most of you guys that are into my stuff are into like the fitness stuff too. So I'm sure you know Christian Guzman. Uh, he's the owner of that. But if you don't know Christian Guzman, he was the one that got me into fitness in the first place. So with that being said, I'm going to go to the gym, get a lift in. It's chest and back. Um, I'll also be doing some PT for my legs. Um, and then after that, we are going to make sure we do something uncomfortable today. All right, we're going to get on it. Get on it, okay? Um, I woke up and I had to take a warm shower. I, I'll preface: I had to take a warm shower because um, I'm still like kind of sick. Like my nose is super clogged, so I just get in the warm shower and just go like, like get all that junk out because it helps like clear out the sinuses. And then I also steamed myself, but that literally cleared it up for maybe like five minutes now it's back to clogged but you know we'll we'll try we'll try um i think today the uncomfortable thing i'm going to do is going to i think me and boogie are going to go on a walk in the cold the cold cold utah um cold salt lake city um i think that's what i'm going to do because i i i used to take boogie on walks like when it was sunny out i know it looks sunny but it's freezing out right now um, so I think that's what I'm going to do for my uncomfortable thing for the day. Do like a two to three mile walk with Boogie. So yeah, stay updated for that. All right, what's good guys? So for our uncomfortable thing for the day, we're taking a little walk with Boog. Um, and this isn't necessarily like usual. Um, so this is out of my comfort zone still, even though it seems like a regular thing, taking your dog for a walk, but it doesn't look like it, but it is cold out in Utah. So I was like, hey, We'll go, we'll go out, take a freezing cold walk for like two miles and then come back. That'll be our uncomfortable thing for the day. I'm still sick, so I can't really push myself that hard, but maybe we get a little jog in there. Who knows? I'm not so excited when my door is just full. They hold one that's busted to that little thick bitch. I'm not endorsing you. Yeah, I just want to get it, get it. I'm in a dream like Freddy. Her body covered in ice, I'm a Yeti. My boy gon' stay on my side with you too. She tryna ride, I told her to just keep it steady. She said that she ready. I want my game, yeah, we having confetti, we throwing up bread in the loo I just drew out my whole damn game, I put some whole new ice in my chain I put the head up, nice and insane, put the SV, I step on my range I sip drink on six to right, I'm gonna dance, bitch, I don't pop lock I put out black on all my cars, I put out black clothes on my bras I'm way too high, going way past Mars, but I had a right start, yeah, by the Cyrus I got a dip, big guy here, Cyrus, I caught the blue money, racks like a virus I count new money every day, I put some blue tint on my chain These niggas broke, that shit so sorry, can't let a lane hang, that's my game yeah, if I ever told you that I love you, it's true. Gotta stay silent when you with the zoo. I'm in cold, D, then I'm swimming the cool. I'm not so excited, but my door is just full. So it's the whole one that's busted to that little tight bitch. What's I'm good? Like Welcome to yeah, the Q&A with TJR and Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, hold on, I don't even have the Instagram pulled up yet. Um, but basically, I'm going to go through the questions that you guys gave me, um, and we are going to cover them. A little Q and A, okay? So we're gonna. Some of them are going to be trading related. Some of them are going to be life related. All right. Some of them are going to be life related. Some of them are going to be boogie related. So, boogie, are you ready to get into it? All right, let's get started. First question, how did you deal with your family not supporting you in the beginning? Um, I just always had the goal to prove them wrong or not really prove them wrong, but make them proud of, uh, make them proud of me. It was kind of like, okay, yeah, like we don't really support it, it, it's it, guys when they don't support you. It's not that your parents also, I need to take these off. It's not that your parents don't want the best thing. Like for you to, um, like they always want the best for you. Okay. So it's just like what they know is safe is like college getting a nine to five versus like day trading is not safe. I don't, I wouldn't even suggest my children to day trade because of how difficult it is. I wouldn't suggest my best friends to day trade because of how difficult it is. I've said this over and over and over again, because day trading is very hard. Um, I would support I would support them if they were trying to do a non nine to five job, but like day trading, day trading is really difficult. 
okay, so I kind of dealt with it like, all right, well, this is what I want to do with my life. So essentially, it's just like, you know, like this is what I want to do and I'm going to make it happen and I'll make you guys proud either way. So it's kind of like not really caring about it. All right. Uh, next one. Did any of your friends start trading too? No. Next one. How much percent do you like to risk each trade? One percent. Next one. Um, when did you know? When did you know that your psychology was right to put more money into trading? You you don't know. Um, if you're putting more money into trading, thinking that, oh yeah, my psychology's right. Your your psychology isn't right. Um, you should you should just assume that money is going to come in through trading. And like for me now, it's like, bro, like I don't even think about the money that I'm making in trading, to be honest. Um, and I don't even think about putting more money into my account in terms of trading. So that that question in itself kind of tells me that your psychology isn't there yet. Um, you should know that money's just going to come. Um, you should just know that money's going to come in time uh, with trading. Um, got a little Starbucks drink. What's the most you've made in one month? Six figures. Um, it was a little bit, or okay, so risk doing actual good risk management. Um, it was like slightly over a hundred thousand dollars. Um, but doing like non like full like full porting risk management, it was like uh, like, or I ended the month with like three hundred thirty k in profit. Um, let's see. What was your first big profit that allowed you to do this full time? Um, all right. So that in itself tells me that you don't necessarily know what you're doing with this. Um, because there's no one big profit that makes you do this full time. It's consistency. Okay. So if you can consistently bring in 200, $300 a day, you're good enough to do this full time. Okay. If you can consistently bring in you know, like a thousand dollars a day, you you're definitely good enough to do this full time. Um, it's not one big profit, bro. It's definitely not one big profit. How do you ta handle taxes when you start day trading? Get an accountant. If you are making money day trading, it's just so much easier to go through accountant. They do all that shit for you. Uh, how much was the Rolex, bro? It looks crazy. Um, it was around like sixteen thousand after everything. Um. And I plan on having it for a while because it fits my style. Um, what's the biggest account you've blown? Uh, it, the account, I flipped a $10,000 account to 112K and then I lost it all two days later. Um, and this was all while I was still unprofitable. I just somehow managed to turn $10,000 into 112K. Um, it was literally just pure luck and I never withdrew any of it. And then I lost it all two days later. Uh, just from over leveraging. Um, uh, let's see. How long did it take for you to become a professional day trader when you started? Two years. Um, what was the transi transition like? Um, like you from going from negative two thousand dollars in your bank account, then moving into an apartment on your own. So yeah, um, that was just kind of like when I had $2,000 left in my bank, it was really just like, uh, it was really just like, all right, well, I need money. I need food. Um, I need a place to stay. Um, I got to get this done. So essentially it was really just like, like working to survive at that point. And a lot of you guys have never been in that position before. And it's not a good position to be in, but I will say I have never gone any lower than that position that I was in. Um, I've never gone any lower than, uh, yeah, never gone any lower than, than negative $2,000 in my bank account and literally working like three days just straight doing DoorDash. And I would, I remember I would go do an order and then I would have to 
ask the people for like cash or like money because my my gas tank was on empty and I would ask them if they could tip me like just one or two bucks so I could fill up my tank even like fill up my tank after that order. So I will do an order, fill up my tank with whatever they tipped me, do another order, fill up my tank with whatever they tipped me just so I could have like gas to keep working. Um, that, that taught me a lot. Um, and that's kind of why I started like the do, do something uncomfortable every day because that I was extremely uncomfortable. Um, that was literally just working. Like I had no other choice. Um, so yeah, uh, I highly suggest you guys don't force yourself into one of those situations, but in your head, you know, think about like, you know, like what, what is like, what's it going to take for me to actually make this work? And then, you know, maybe set up a fake scenario so you don't have to go through what I went through. Um, what are you, what are you doing in your free time? This, <laughs> I do like social media in my free time. Social media is essentially a hobby to me right now. Hopefully I can turn it into a job. Um, day trading was a hobby when I was learning it. Now it's a job. I would like to say I do social media and day trading as a job. Um, it would be cool. Right now we're low on subs, uh, we're low on subscribers, but that's what that's what I'm working towards, you know, making this making this a full time job. It would be it would be fun to you know hold a camera around and talk to you guys all day. Um, favorite artists on the Opium label. I love this question. Um, so yeah, hold on. I I literally have a picture. If we go to my Instagram real quick, um, I can I can show this to you guys. Hold on, let me find it. Music. So just to answer that question while I'm finding this, my favorite is probably Destroy Lonely right now. So right here, this was my <laughs> this was my Spotify wrapped. It was Yeet, Lucky, Ken, Lone, and then Cardi. Um, I I was a Yeet dick rider last year. I'm not going to lie. I was on him. Um, I really like Lucky as well, even though he's not opium. And then top one out of opium right now has to be Lone. Uh, destroy lonely he he's been in li literally every single one of my like youtube videos like if you heard a song odds are it has destroy lonely in it um in my youtube videos because he's my favorite artist right now i i don't know like i could listen to every single one of his songs just on repeat and i do every single day it's just like lone on repeat i i have no doubt in my mind that he'll be my top artist um in 2023 and then ken will probably num probably be number two it's either between Ken and Homicide Gang because I really like Homicide Gang too. They're they're fire. Um, but yeah, music is like a huge huge thing for me. Um, I I listen to music like all the time. Like you always see me wearing these. Like, bro, it's like the music's on twenty four seven. Um, I like that question. All right, let's keep going. Let's go scroll back to where we were at. All right, so. Your history up till now would be interesting and why you got into trading. Hold on, pause this video right now. Loompa, loompa, dippa dee doo. I have a butt crack just for you. All right, we're back in business. Resume. Okay, what's um, what music do you listen to? We kind of already covered that. Um, uh, yeah, literally. Or, uh, okay, so this is actually something cool about me. So like every other time that I'm listening to music besides trading, um, I I listen to I listen to like opium, like just just opium um it's like ken lone homicide gang cardi um oh i really like lancy even though he's not in opium but like same type of vibe you know like underground shit so yeah um but when i'm trading i don't like listening to that i don't know why but it, it like almost makes me distracted it, it's like because i'm just like fucking with the music too much like i'm just like damn like this shit's hitting and like i'm not focused on the charts so when I'm trading, I listen to house music, which is like mainly just like beats. Like if you guys have seen the other YouTube videos, I'll throw on like, um, 
that one dude like on the on YouTube and he'll just like be in the background like in some like cool ass like tropical place like playing just like a house mix so I like that um, when I'm trading it just like helps me focus do you feel more bored or the same amount of bored now um, I'm guessing he's talking about like like from before when I wasn't profitable and like doing normal stuff um, like, am I more bored now? Um, no, I think, I think when you get money, um, I think when you get money, it's like, you can kind of do whatever. So for me, it's like, I don't know if I'm bored, I can usually think of something to do, but also like, I like, I, I just like doing, like, I just like post it up, like, with my boy, like, with Boog. I like chilling with my friends, so, I don't know. I would say I'm, like, equal amount of bored. Um, I do think when I go to San Diego and L.A. over the summer, I'll definitely be a little bit more, like, entertained um, and, like, with more things to do, and I'll definitely get more acky out there, um, get more active, you know, Um so yeah, as of right now, I'm kind of equal level of board, but you know, the social media stuff and starting all that has definitely helped me. Cause I remember when I was just doing day trading, I was really bored. I would, I would just wake up trade and it's like, bro, like now what? And, and instead now it's like, okay, wake up, trade, do TikToks, film YouTube. Then it's like, now what, you know? All right. Um, why don't you try and get private investors? You could get multiple seven fig you could get a multiple seven figures account. Um yeah, so I've had lots of people I've had lots of people say this before to me and it's like, bro, y'all are missing the point. Okay? So, I've had so many people say like, why don't you open a copy trader account where everyone can just deposit money and you can you could be making like millions a month. Do you understand the type of psychological discipline that it would take to be able to manage a multi-million dollar account? Because my mindset isn't there yet. I feel like you guys are having trouble like wrapping your head around like the type, like, the type of psychology that it takes to be able to do that, bro. Like you will enter a trade and you'll be down $10,000 just due to spread like off rip like when you press buy or when you press sell you'll instantly be down ten thousand dollars of real cold uh hard cash bro like right now i could easily increase my my account size like five fold like five x my account size but i can't because i'm not comfortable with losing the amount of money that I would if I, you know, like if I, um, if I were to lose it, like if I were to lose a trade like that, there's a reason why I'm comfortable losing one to like $3,000 a day versus me losing like $10,000. Like that's a big difference. Okay. $10,000 is a lot of money. All right. Um, it's, it's all about like perspective and like, yes, when I get more money and as my account starts compounding and more money starts coming in, yes, of course my account will grow. And I've been doing that gradually, but you guys really don't understand like, like trading on a hundred dollar account is far different than trading on a hundred thousand dollar account. But also with that being said, if you can't trade on a hundred dollar account, you definitely can't trade on a hundred thousand dollar account. All right, so continue. When are you going to do a giveaway for the fans besides the Discord? I'm broke as shit. Come on, bro. If you're broke as shit, bro, like this is something that I was thinking of the past week. Um, if you don't, if you don't have at least a thousand dollars in your bank account right now, what are you doing, bro? Dead ass, what are you doing? Are you like are you you're, you're posted with your friends? I guess what, bro? You can make a thousand dollars in probably like four days just doing DoorDash, bro. I know I did that shit. Just four days, you can make a band. 
um, even a week, you know, if you want to extend it, you like literally just do DoorDash for a week and you can make a band. Um, because wow, bro, like you guys, like you guys are the type to like complain about like how expensive things are. And it's like, dude, <laughs> it's not their fault. It's your fault. It's expensive to you. It's not expensive to me. It's not expensive to other people. It's not expensive. It's expensive to you. You're the one who has that expensive mindset. So get out of it, bro. Um, so yeah, I won't be doing a giveaway to people that are broke because they're broke for a reason. Um, you know, thinking back to when I was broke, I would have loved to get a handout. But guess what? Me not getting a handout helped me get to where I'm at today. So make, dude, make it yourself. You know, like the people that support me and actually pay for my time are the people that I know. Like there's people that dead ass DM me on Instagram and are like, yo, bro, like I bought your discord just because of how much you've helped me just to support you because they turn profitable just off YouTube and TikTok. And they're like, now I can support you. So something to think about, bro. All right. Um, respond to my DM. There's an in interesting question. I won't respond to your DM. Um, <laughs> this is this is another thing about Instagram DMs. Um, so I've, if you guys have noticed, you know, like probably a couple months ago. I was really good at responding to DMs. Uh, I never had any any DMs left unanswered. And now I can't even respond to DMs. One, because my Discord has grown so much and my Discord takes priority over any type of Instagram DM. So when people have questions in the Discord, I'm answering that before I even get to the Instagram DMs. And then even then, when I do get to Instagram DMs, it's the same questions every single time that could be answered with maybe five to 10 seconds of research on their own. So I just have chosen not to answer a decent amount of Instagram DMs. I'll answer a few here and there, um, but my time is a lot more useful elsewhere because I know if they DM'd me, saying that question, they can just copy and paste that question into Google, like maybe five minutes later, if I haven't responded yet, and they'll get the same answer that I was going to give them, if not a better one. So continuing, why did you name Boogie Boogie? Okay, this is a funny, this is a funny question. Boogie, what are you doing? He's literally eating my table right now. Um, but why did I name him Boogie? Come here. Hello, Papa. Um, I mean, look at him, bro. Does he not look like a boogie? Um, but okay, I'll get, I'll go into like the reasoning behind it. So I already knew, like, I knew that I wanted a dog. Um, and I knew that I knew that it, I don't know. This was like weird. I, I knew that I wanted a dog and I knew that I wanted to name him boogie. And before I even knew or saw bro, um, so it was really just choosing the dog that looked most like Boogie. Um, <laughs> hello. Um, and for me, the reason why I named him that is one, I'm from California and I love boogie boarding. So boogie, boogie boarding. Um, and also when I was like just driving around, I was really cranking to a boogie with a hoodie. And I was like, yo, like boogie, like that's low key, like a super tough name. Um, <laughs> That's like a super cool name. So I was like, yeah, bro, like, like, yeah, like bet I'll name him Boogie. I like boogie boarding. And I was like nutting on a boogie with a hoodie. And then also I was thinking about like that one, like bear from open season, you know, that bear bug or yeah, yeah. His name's bug from open season. I was like, yo, that bear is like super cool, hella friendly and like a big ass bear bug, you know? So um, that's why I named Boogie Boogie. Are you coming down to South Florida this year? Yes, I'm going to Miami in between my, tr my Rolling Loud and my Coachella trip. So between March and April, I'll go to Miami for probably like four or five days. 
What shampoo slash conditioner do you use? Um, fun fact, I have no hair routine, bro. Like, I literally just get in the shower and then dry it. It just... This is what it looks like. I need a haircut pretty soon because it's getting kind of long. Um, so, yeah. Uh, shampoo and conditioner. I use a ketoconazole shampoo, um, which essentially is just like... Um, Bro, what are you doing right now? Which is essentially like a, a hair loss shampoo, so I don't lose hair. I don't know. Um, I just use it because it like reduces dandruff. And I only use shampoo like twice a week, and then I'll do conditioner every single day. Um, what's your purpose? Like, what do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? I want to help as many people as possible. Like I said at the beginning of this video, um, I want to help as many people as possible. I want to make an impact on people's lives. I want people to to hear my name and like remember me. You know, be like, "Oh yeah, I know him." And you know me like for a reason because I've like been beneficial to you in some way shape or form. Um Have people changed when you have people changed when you reached success? Um, yeah. So something I noticed, uh, a lot of people. Something that I notice when it comes to money, people will kind of take you for granted. And this actually happened this past week. Um, yeah, bro. Like. Like, people kind of treat you like, you know, like money is nothing to you, and it really isn't much to me, but they kind of assume that money means nothing to you, so that means you're just like an ATM, or you're just like a, a person that you can go and ask for money, or a person that you can go and, you know, like, use for money um, when you don't have the money for stuff, and that is not the case at all. So, yeah, watch out for that. Um, you know, some people some people might be not who you think they are. All right, we'll wrap this up with one really good one. Um How are you so sexy? That's a good one. You're so hot. Like how do you do it? That those two were from the same person. Wow horny on another level. Um, okay. I like this one. What are some goals you still haven't achieved yet? A hundred K on TikTok, 50 K on YouTube, creating my, my own hedge fund, which will be my own private hedge that I run by myself with nobody else's money. So essentially, essentially it's just, I'm my own fund manager, um, where I'm literally just working with massive amounts of money. Um, and I want to get into real estate. Those are some short-term goals. Um, the FET, the hedge fund is more of a long-term goal because I, I won't be there, you know, by the end of this year, but I think hundred K on TikTok is, you know, like probably going to happen within the next like four to five months and then 50k on youtube that might take like a year and a half maybe um but i see the potential in what this social media stuff can do and then the the real estate stuff is probably going to happen this year because i have the capital i'm ready to leverage it um and then the hedge fund will probably just be like whenever i'm done you know like whenever i'm done trading because my hedge fund will just be purely investment investments. Um, and I kind of want to get to the point where I stop trading, which is a extremely risk on type of type of job and just move purely to investment style uh, of like work where I just like, you know, I have like a fat, fat account and it's like, boom, place these event investments down for like five years cash them out and then just like rinse and repeat type of vibe. And it's like, you know, cash out those five years, cool in, posted, you know, like 
chilling for like another two years and then it's like boom what's the next play to load us up again you know so that's a quick little q a for you guys um hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully that gave you like a little more look into my life into what i'm doing what my goals are for the future and boogie come here come here oh and hopefully you learned a little bit about the boogie baby Hello, Bucky. Oh, he's making out with me. Dude, Bucky really is just like my baby. Look, he, lo he looks like so scary. Like everybody that sees him thinks he's so scary and terrifying. But he really, all he wants is just love and attention and pets, bro. Or like, dude, he just literally just wants to be pet 24 seven. Like if I'm not petting him, He'll just, like, be, like, crying, bro. Like, literally whining and crying if, if he's not getting pet. So, Boogie is just a little attention fiend. Whoa! Okay. Bye!